Hello, I'd like to show you a demonstration of a painting using the Atelier Interactive Acrylics uh, and I'll explain as I go along why I love using them and some of the little tricks and techniques that this particular type of paint allows you to create. Uh, the painting is a view from the borders, it's kind of made up but it's an area uh, around the borders of Scotland. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and thank you for joining me. Okay, so I'm going to use some muck off the palette. This is from a previous painting, but I can reactivate it with some water. It was a couple of days ago, so it's easy to reactivate. Uh, and I can use this to do my drawing. I'm just going to make something up here, a little landscape. So I've got a couple of hills, I'm going to have some trees up there, this is some, some rocks coming down this piece here and some grass coming across there. So I'm going to use my 30ml Da Vinci brush. I'm using here some ultramarine. I've got a little bit of a thalo turquoise because I know there's a bit of that left in my palette and some white. Just how beautifully that covers all in one go. Picking up a little extra white. Picked up a bit of rubbish. And I'm just blending that colour in. Because you get that little bit of extra time you can get a beautiful blend on these. I'm just going to bring some of that colour down and hopefully a little bit of this will show through later. So then I'm going to pick up with the colour that I had in the sky, so I'm, I've got a bit more of the ultramarine this time. Let's just show you my mix. I've got a bit more ultramarine and I'm going to put a little tiny touch of quinacridone magenta, which is just a very, very strong colour and beautiful. And then a little bit of this colour that I've got in here, which is toning grey, which is just lovely for softening colours. So let me show you. We've got that colour there. We add the toning grey. It doesn't lose the colour, but it just softens it slightly. Just need a little bit more. So we've got this lovely warm grey. I have a touch more of my ultramarine coming down here. And just blending that through. And then I'm just taking some of this colour and I'm just breaking that top edge with it. Just to give me some hills on that distance. And then I've just come into a more pointed brush. I'm going to rub this in a minute so it's not quite so obvious, but it's just adding a few verticals into this. So I've washed my brush and I'm drying it out. OK, 
Okay, let's blend some more down here. I think I need something going on down here. So I'm going to mix up a slightly darker mix. I'm going to use um, burnt sienna along with my ultramarine. This gives me this nice warm dark colour. So I've just got to decide. I'm just going to drag this across. The paper I'm using here, the surface I'm working on, is the SAA's acrylic practice paper, which is great. It's a nice texture on there that you can create some, uh, it's like a, a weave texture. Just bringing these along. And my paint hasn't dried all that much yet, so I can still scratch into it. So I can, again, I'm just going to dip my brush in the water, and that's enough just to move things a little bit. So we're putting a, a bit of variety into that. Clean my brush up a little bit. I'm just going to take a dusting of a white. This in my head is up near where my daughter lives, which is on the borders, so you sometimes get this just dusting of snow. So I'm just putting in that little dusting. Just creating again a little texture. It's all distant, it's all very soft. Now I want this bit here to be a little bit more colourful. So I'm picking up some more, some of the um, Thalo Turquoise along with the Quinacridone Magenta. So it's just brighter than we have there. pick up some green. Actually what I've got here is some ultramarine mixed in with a um, almeride yellow so it gives me this and then I'm picking up a little bit of yellow ochre to go in there as well. I just want to vary my colours around the picture. Putting in some burnt umber with the yellow ochre. And then a bit of ultramarine coming up. put a bit of snow on we need to have winter trees so um, I'm going to have a few trees just coming up here just using the narrow part of my brush so I'm going to go right up off the page and some dark underneath some shrubland things that are going on down there. Again, just wherever I'm going, I sometimes just put a layer of something down just to link things together. So I'm going to come back to my round brush. I'm just going to pull some branches out from here. Just kind of doing the bases with the brush. I'm going to do some of the outer branches slightly differently in a minute just to give you another technique. Okay. Right, what I'm grabbing here is I've just got a bamboo stick. 
So I've diluted my paint a little bit so it's a little moister, so I've added a touch of water to it. And I'm just using this stick to drag some of these branches out. Also going to come in with the side of my brush. I quite like painting with the side of my brush. So I've put the paint on the side of the brush. I'm just dragging that back towards towards the trunks themselves. Just using a fine brush, I'm just going to link these two sections up. So I'm just starting to, to create this. You can see here I've scratched into it, which I quite like that. So And I've got mixtures of my green black, my um, burnt umber and some of that toning grey. This is just giving me a variety of tones and textures for these uh, trees. So I've got this little clump of trees coming here. Now I just want to create a few textures on here, so I'm just going to spray that with a little bit of water. And then I'm going to come back in with my tissue, and where that's wet, it's re-wet just where I've sprayed. So I can now lift that, and you can see you start to get these textures. You don't want to do too much, because otherwise you'll just wipe all the paint off. Where you spray and you don't want to lift it, just allow it to dry, it's fine. But just dab where you want to create that, that texture. So coming back to this one, this is my SAA flatmate that I'm using. And again, just scratch into it. So coming back to that green that I used earlier, the amaryllis yellow, and I'm going to mix that in with some of the blues that I've got on the paper from the sky. So again, just coming in with my stick and I'm just going to scratch in, again, this is just about being able to move the paint and create some textures. Just makes it more interesting. And I paint and scratch and paint, so not all of the scratching is on top, I want it to be sort of part of the whole thing. Let's have a bit of this colour in places around here.
Okay, so I want to pick up a little bit more of my ultramarine. So I want this, I've got a bit of blue here, so I've still got a bit of my green on my palette. Um, and I've just added some ultramarine into it, so I just want to make this kind of quite bluey colour here. I've got some rocks that I want to have coming down there. And then I'm picking up some of my toning grey. Didn't wash my brush, just mixed it in there. So I just want to put some of those little spots in there. You kind of need to let it dry off a little bit before you do this. So just spraying that and lifting some bits of that out. So coming in with my green black, which is another colour I absolutely love. Russian's a bit fat, so let's go back to using my stick. So again, just my green black and some ultramarine. I'm just lightening that because I want this grass in front to stand up in front of that. It either has to be lighter or darker than what's behind it, so it's, it's just a case of building up um, layers and textures. Now in my head, this is an area near where my daughter lives, like I say, on the borders. Um, and you've just got these massive distances and beautiful skies and wonderful vistas. Let's pick up a bit more of my magenta. Let's have a bit more of that coming in here. That's lovely in there, that sort of purpley colour. That, that magenta and the turquoise together just create this amazing colour. Here. The rocks here are very, very pale. They're quite chalky in this place that I've got in my head. So I'm going to start off. It's mostly white, but I also want to add a little bit of a Naples yellow. So just putting this down in blocks and then I can break these blocks up. So just little sections of this, trying to keep it quite loose as I'm going. I'm trying not to create too much detail. I want to get some more of these spots up here but I need that to dry off a little bit more first. So 
So we've got these rocks and they really stand out beautifully. I want to have one or two of them, just bits of this rock just coming out into the field in front. Let's just have a little section there. I think that's just about right. It's at the stage where it's tacky, so this is ideal to do this Spray it, give it a second just to soak in, and then we start to get these textures of what's underneath. I need a clean bit of tissue here. More there. Oh, that's nice. It just shows up some of those colours that were underneath and just brings the layers through. It's probably about right to do some down here as well. Just give it a few seconds to settle. Just flicking it with your fingers gives you bigger blobs. So up here it's nice to have the fine spray. And you see you get all that wonderful texture. Just a bit of scratching into it before it dries too much. But if it has dried too much, just spray it with some water and then you can start making some inroads. So it just allows you to have a lot of freedom within this. Not quite so much. Let's bring a little bit of that purple through here. Jumping around, putting little bits in. Oh, look, just by re wetting. Look how beautifully that just lifts. Okay, I need to work into these here now. They're just blobs at the minute. we use I can mix up some of my deep purple so that's the um, ultramarine the the magenta and I've probably got a little bit of green black left off my palette as well I need a bit more of my brown in there too the raw umber bringing this in. So just making a few little little shapes. Pick up a little bit of my burnt sienna as well. Just changing it up. They're all colours I've used. Okay. 
So again now I'm going to take water because of the properties of the paint I can just take this water and just blend these and soften any edges that I want to. I've still got time to do all of that. I will come back and put some highlights into this in a minute but this is just creating all the shapes that I want to within that stone. So all I'm using here is water and a damp cloth but what I'm doing is I'm washing my brush and then dabbing it off. I don't want to be putting lots of water down, it's just using that dampness of the brush. So this is just a beautiful way of working because it does, you have to give yourself time, you have to make sure you can revisit all the areas you want to before it dries, um, but you've got a lot more time to do that with this paint. So having put those shadows in, I can smudge them. Smudge, smudge, smudge. So I'm going to come back into some white now. I just want to put a few highlights onto here. So just adding a little catch of light. Got a little lump of something in there. Let's take that off. Let's make up a slightly darker mix. Just a bit more shaping going on within these rocks. couple more touches of this light. Then just putting a bit more colour down. Just going to use the tip of my finger to smudge a few things around. just want to touch a little bit of that frosty dusting. I don't want to lose all of that texture that I put on with the... Let's put some more of that down here. Look how beautifully that lifts out still.
little bit of frosting. 